People have a picture that it's going to be suddenly evil comes on the world, as if the Antichrist just flew in from another world, turns everything upside down, takes over some evil government, comes into power. That's not the way Hanukkah happened. It's not the way it's going to happen in the end times either. First, there will come an apostasy. Now the menorah in the temple had seven lights, but the Hanukkah menorah called, or the Hanukkah, has nine lights. Why? Eight for the eight days or the eight nights of Hanukkah, and the one in the middle or the end called the Shamash, which means the servant that lights up the rest. The Bible says that Messiah is the servant of God and he lights us up. And so I'm going to say the blessing and the blessing that is said all around the world and it's going to begin, it begins this weekend. And this is the blessing. There's two main ones. I'll do it with this. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivanu lehadlik ner Shel hanukam Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, the sovereign of all existence, who sanctifies us and commands us to light the lights of dedication. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sha'asa Nisim Lavoteinu Bayamim Ha'hem Bazman Hazem Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who performed great wonders for our ancestors at this time in that place. And so the lights of Hanukkah the li are the lights of dedication. In the Gospel of John, it says something that most believers have seen but they don't realize what it is and most Jewish people have no idea of it. It says in John 10 and it was the feast of dedication. It was winter time in Jerusalem and Yeshua Jesus was walking in the temple in Solomon's portico and the Jewish people came around him and said how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah tell us plainly. And he said, I have told you, this was Hanukkah. This is Messiah. Hanukkah, his Hanukkah words. And you know what he said? That's when he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And he said, you know, he said, I bear witness. He said, are you the Messiah? He said, I and my father are one. On Hanukkah, he is the light of the world. Now, there is also the end time mystery of Hanukkah. We're going to get into that tonight in the message. But the actual menorah that was lit up on Hanukkah was not the nine branch or the eight branch, but the seven branch. This represents the seven branch for eight days lit. And so we're going to light up that. We also do it another time. We do it on next week. We're going to especially do it in a special way because the rabbi said, you never can light this up. This is the temple one. You can't light up the seven one until Messiah has come. So every year we light it up because we know Messiah has come. And so, but tonight we're going to light it up for the, with the Messianic prophecies next week. But now, as the, the scriptures on the light of God, this is representing the temple menorah. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth and he, His Spirit was on the darkness and He said, let there be light. And there was light. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the shadow of death, the light has sh shone upon them. And He said, I am the light of the world. 
He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And he said, you are the light of the world. So let your light so shine that they will glorify your Father in heaven with your good works. And so it is written, we have the prophetic word made more sure as a lamp shining in the darkness until the day dawns and the morning star arises. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has now shone in our hearts with the light of God, the glory of God in the face of Messiah. Hanukkah, the most spiritual or the most personal part of it, it's about the rededication of the temple. But what does the Bible say? It's amazing because today we don't have a temple yet in Jerusalem. We know there will be, but there has not been for 2,000 years. And yet the Jewish people have been celebrating the dedication, Hanukkah, dedication of the temple. There's no temple. But the Bible says now you are the temple of God. You are the temple of God. And so a really cool thing because not only are you the temple of God, but the story, the, the account of Hanukkah is really a, a, an incredible revelation of our salvation because we were the temple of God, but we became, we were born to be, we were made to be the, the house of God's dwelling, but we became defiled like that temple. We, we had idols. We had, de we had desecration, defilement. But then Jesus comes into the temple. Messiah comes in. He says, open up. Comes in and he cleanses our, our life. He cleanses us from idols, cleanses us from sin. And then he lights up our life from the inside, from the, dar from the, the darkest way. He lights us up. So no matter what else goes on around us, we've got a light inside of us. But you know, it's easy, even as the temple of God, it's easy to let the light kind of burn low, and the fire burn low. It's easy to get idols that they slip back in and defilement slip back in. So it's always a great thing on Hanukkah to reconsecrate, rededicate, it's dedication, our hearts and lives to God. This week it came out, a survey, and let me, let me even say before, what we're going to do, what I'm going to share tonight is, is the part of the end time mystery of Hanukkah, what it has to do with you, and it goes up to even things that happened this week. So this week, they had a survey, it was in the news, might surprise you, I don't know, but about four out of ten Americans believe we are living in the end times. Forty percent of America. That means that more Americans than there are born-again believers believe that it's the end times. People who are not even born again. That we're living, in fact, even, this is a really weird, even those who are of other religions outside of Christianity, about 30% of them believe we're in the end times. I don't even know how that happens. Even those who are of the Democratic Party, <laughs> leaning or leaning Democrat, liberal, about 35% of them believe we're in the end times. And get this, of agnostics and atheists, Together, about 23% of them believe we're in the end times. I don't know how that works. Why do people believe that? Well, because we are. And because of the times we live, there's a sense of it. Hanukkah, I share, is the most detailed revelation of the end times of the holy days of Israel. Most detailed. To name, give you just one example, Hanukkah involves... The account of Antiochus, this evil man who's asked, who called himself Epiphanes, which means God manifest, entered the temple of Jerusalem, defiled it, and the Bible says that that's going to happen again. But it's going to be the Antichrist. It says in Daniel that this one, he defiled it. It was the abomination desolation, made it desolate. It's going to happen again in the, in the book of Revelation. It's going to happen again. Paul said it. The, the Antichrist. Antiochus is a foreshadow of the Antichrist. And what happened in Hanukkah is a foreshadow of what's going to happen in the end times. And what happened with the Maccabees is a key for how we are to live in the end times. That's right. There's a lot here. But I'm going to focus on just two of the most significant things of keys linked to Hanukkah in the end times. And even bring events of the last month, even this last week, into it. Daniel 11, you can open up or you can just listen. Daniel 11, in Daniel 11, the prophet 
sees what's going to happen in Hanukkah. But also it's a shadow of what's going to happen at the end. So it kind of, things start merging with the Antichrist. But he says this. It says, then he will turn back and vent his fury, Antiochus, symbol of Antichrist, against the Holy Covenant. His armed forces will rise up to desecrate the temple fortress. He will invade the beautiful land. It was really an inside job in the beginning. In fact, Antiochus, who desecrated the temple, was led into the temple by the high priest who was apostate. And that too is a revelation of the end times. People have a picture that it's going to be suddenly evil comes on the world, as if the Antichrist just flew in from another world, turns everything upside down, takes over some evil government, comes into power. That's not the way Hanukkah happened. It's not the way it's going to happen in the end times either. First there will come an apostasy. Paul says it. Thessalonians, the day will not come until first comes a great falling away. Greek word apostasia. We get, the world is going to prepare for it. As Israel's apostasy prepared for Antiochus, America's and the world's apostasy is going to prepare for the Antichrist. Messiah didn't just come. The way was prepared. The times were prepared. So with the Antichrist. The culture will prepare for it. The way will be opened for it. The spirit of Antichrist will already be here before he comes. It's already here. So it is in everything. Antichrist. It can mean the opposite of Christ, Messiah. It can mean against the Messiah, instead of the Messiah, in place of the Messiah. So the, so the door is going to be opened by a culture or a nation or a civilization that first turns away from the Messiah, away from the faith, away from the Bible, to be open to what is in place of Messiah. What is a substitute for God? Substitute for Messiah and then ultimately against Him. So amazing thing because this is, that's what's happening all around us right now. This was written, the warning that Paul gave, there'll be a great falling away, was written in the first century. In the first century, that was amazing. The idea that this faith that only was, was part of, it was only a small fraction of a fraction of people of the world were he believers, but he's talking as if the whole, the world is going to be covered with this faith, which it has been. There's going to be a great falling away from the faith that hadn't even spread to the world yet, but now it is. I was on TBN and a panel with a panel of prophecy experts and we were asked, what do you believe is the greatest sign of the end times? And I said, I'll give you two. One is Israel. Israel back, is back, has to be. And the second, which nobody else went into, is the apostasy. The apostasy is the sign of the last days that is with us every day. You can see signs of it everywhere, every day. Television, internet, it's there. So big, so universal, and it's only accelerating. And you know which nations are leading it? The very same nations that once had the gospel. The West, Europe, America. They are the ones who are spreading anti-biblical values, the war on gender, the killing of the unborn, the twisting of sexuality, even the vilifying of the gospel is coming from the nations that had known the gospel. It's not like with the Cold War. Cold War said America, Christian, Russia, godless. That's not how, to, how it is now. Now nations all over the world see America not as a city on a hill. They see it as a darkened culture, apostate culture that is morally corrupt and spreading it to the world. We just saw the Biden administration release a Russian arms dealer, trafficker, for a ladies basketball star who was caught with drugs in Russia. Now that whole trade out outraged many people. But I saw an interview with a Russian prisoner who was released, that, that guy, and you know the interviewer asks him, do you hate America? He says, no, 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 not at all. He says, but America is losing its Christian values. He says it's losing its families. They're losing their country. He said it's not the same country. He said America used to be a model for the entire world. The city, he said the city on the hill. But now it's losing it all. America and the West are apostatizing. The nation that used to lead its children in its public schools in the Lord's Prayer all over the country, that nation is gone. As I wrote in The Return of the Gods, it is transforming, paganizing, apostatizing. It's no accident that the Western nations are leading it because that's what apostasy is. 
You have known something and you fall away from it. In order to have the Antichrist, you first had to have the Christ and fall away, turn away from the Christ, you'll get the Antichrist. It's those very nations that have the potential for the greatest evil. The greatest evils in the world, in modern world, have come from the West. Even communism came from the West. Nazism came from the West. Fascism came from the West. What's happening now came from the West because when you turn away from God, you get worse. And as we continue this on Sunday, but something else I will also mention, an amazing discovery also came out this week in, from Israel, the first ever such discovery, and it all had to do with the ancient events of Hanukkah, first time in human history. Just came this week. And it has to do with the end times, and it has to do with the message that I was led to give you on Sunday. There is no, just, but let's bring this home now. There is no question we are living in an age of apostasy. There is no question this is a sign of the last days. The Bible said it. You've got it. The answer, so what's the answer? The answer is in how the Maccabees responded because if this is a, the shadow of what's happening now, we have a shadow of how to overcome. And I'm just going to say this. I'm just going to finish with this. The first thing that happened was this. They were defeated until this one guy, the father of the Maccabees, Mattathias, he stands up and he says, that's it. That, you've crossed the final line. That's it. I am not, I am not bending with this. I'm not, I'm not going with this anymore. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna just sit by anymore. I'm drawing the line right here. And the thing is, that's when the revolt happened. That's when God anointed it. And the key is, you have to draw your line in the sand. Draw your line. If you don't, the culture is going down and it will take you down with it. Mattathias said, this is enough. No more. This is too much. If you don't draw the line in the sand, there is no stopping it in your life. Just as for the churches that apostatized, it began with a little weakness. Let's just give in a little bit. It, they're gone. Example, you're a parent. You thought Disney was safe. Maybe it used to be. But every year, things get darker. Something else is introduced, step by step, first subtly, first a little bit, then it becomes more brazen, then it becomes more major, then it becomes, well, it's not a side issue anymore. So where's your line? What are you going to allow your children to watch? Where's your line? You have to draw the line or you're going to be taken. Because if this all happened years ago, you'd say, this is bizarre. Get rid of this. This is horrible. Get it out of my house. But now because it happened step by step, draw your line. The key is he made his stand. So he drew his line and he made a stand. You know, apostasy means to fall away from the stand. Well, the key about in the end times is you have to make a stand. That means drawing the line wherever you have to do. Whether it's, di whether it's children's programming for your children, whether it's adult programming for yourself. What you will watch, what you won't watch, what you will do, what you won't do, what you will obey and what you will not obey. It means making a stand. Mattathias said, I don't care what the rest of the nation does. I am not going to, I am not going to let this happen anymore. I am standing. You're going to take the same thing, same attitude. I will not do that. I don't care if they take away my job. I will not do that. I will not defile God. Not, don't be afraid to say no. That's all you know. A bully is a bully until you say no. I don't care what the price is. They seek to deplatform me, defund me. I don't care. I will not burn the incense to Caesar, first century. Make your decision now. I will not bow my knee to Baal, days of Elijah. Draw the line now. Make the decision now. Make the commitment now. You know, you, I will not do that. I will not go along with that. When that, that's it, I don't care. And the other, the most important thing as well, last thing, if you're going to stand against the falling away, you've got to be holding on to something. If the whole world is falling away, it's because they don't have a grounding. They don't have a, they don't have anything to stand on. The Maccabees didn't just resist. They obeyed God. They had faith. They held to God. You need to do the same, especially now. You got to get that bond that you have to God stronger. This is Jonathan Kahn. Thanks for watching. The Josiah Manifesto and all my books you can get anywhere. Amazon, wherever books are sold. Shalom.